Hello and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to look at a true Unix OS in the form of Open Indiana, which is a community led distribution based on Open Solaris. And I have not run anything Solaris related since before 2008. So this will be a nice little nostalgia trip for me and a an opportunity to check out something a little bit different. Let's get started. All right, I've set up the basics in VirtualBox. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this off and then we'll take a look at their website while everything is loading. Now I'll switch this to scaled view make things a little bit easier so we're going to let it boot into the default multi-user and so you can see already if you've used uh, freebsd if you've used um, free nas some of this is going to look familiar to you there are, are pieces of the boot process that are very similar between those different Unix OS's. All right. So number seven is the default language for English. We'll just hit enter. And so while this is doing its thing, let's just jump over to their website. So openindiana.org is their website, and it talks about Illumos, which is the underlying OS distribution that this is built on top of. Uh, this is the hipster distribution 2019-04. I thought this was an 05. Maybe I'm wrong. So the hipster distribution. And so you can see some of the features here. ZFS, FAT, NTFS 3G for Fuse, SSHFS, and it's got pretty common list of development items here programming languages under servers you've got your smattering of databases web servers and other things it's running a mate desktop it's got gtk and Qt. comes with vlc and then we've got the rundown of office and graphics which i think these are a little outdated and one thing i have noticed on their website is some of this stuff seems to be lagging because if you go to roadmap it is talking about on the menu for hipster 2017.10 and we're in may of 2019 now so their their website could use a, a nice update so let's jump back over to virtualbox and we do in fact have our desktop up and going. Pretty standard looking Mate desktop with the Open Indiana branding. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. So let's go ahead and run our, our installer using the graphical install utility. And it talks about looking at release notes and things before you go through. We're going to use the whole disk. And we are going to nope. Americas. And United States Eastern. It is the 14th and time looks good. We'll say next English, which is already our default. Next again. All right, software open Indiana, American New York. Everything looks good and we will go ahead and install. And while that is doing its thing, we'll jump back over to their website. So, Illumos. 
So it says it's a consolidation of software that forms the core of the operating system, including the kernel device drivers, core system, libraries, and utilities. Home of many technologies such as ZFS, DTrace, Zones, CTF, FMA, and more. And it says they pride themselves on having a stable, highly observable, and technologically different system. In addition, Illumos traces its roots back through Sun Microsystems to the original releases of Unix and BSD. They've got an official wiki. Let's take a look at their blog. Not found. <laughs> Like I said, they need to do some updating on this website. Projects, maybe? Okay, open Indiana distribution, different things going on here. Activity is not found. They've really got some website issues happening. How about the official wiki? So there are other Illumos based distributions. And they've got a list here. So. OmniOS CE is a server based distribution. Of course, Open Indiana. There's Smart OS, Nexon Store, which is more of a storage or probably a NAS type of distribution. Triblix, which is again a workstation server. Dilos or Dilos, another workstation server. Extreme OS as a server although that's got a graphical interface so that's a little odd uh, in the unix world and then v9 os which is another server distribution that's one i've not looked at yet all right current version 15.11.01 october 2008 Server only, IPS based, minimal Spark distribution. So, unless you've got an old Sun workstation with a Spark processor, probably not going to be of a whole lot of use to you. Extreme OS may be of a little more use if their website wants to load up. Let's jump back to VirtualBox while we're waiting. And that's got about, that's misleading. This is the actual progress down here. So we've got a little bit of time to kill. Uh, Extreme OS does not seem to be loading. Dilos or Dilos. Not sure how to pronounce that. That did load up. And they're on version 2.0.1 as of September 2018. So it's an Illumos based platform with the Debian package manager. So kind of bridging between real Unix and Linux by bringing over some of the Debian technologies. And ISO images are available. Let's see what their frequently asked questions has on it. Uh, let's see, it's free. Talks about packages and browsing the app repository. Very minimalistic there. Check on our progress, 24%. All right, I'm going to step away for a few moments and we'll come back when we're close to or at the end of our installer. All right, we are at 99% and we'll shortly get this uh, restarting and we will reboot into our brand new Open Indiana install. I will say this is probably the slowest damn installer that I've seen in quite a long time. I can't say that it surprises me because Solaris did have a kind of derogatory nickname and people referred to it as Slow Laris. If that gives you any idea, I, I do remember on the Sun Machines that I used in the computer lab in my college days uh, they were none too quick <laughs> so and uh, at the time I had thought that was due to the campus network infrastructure but I was mistaken about that 
At this point, if I had to make a call, I would say just use FreeBSD or grab a Linux distribution because this install process is nothing short of infuriatingly slow. Fuck's sake. Wow, this bugger is slow. <sighs> All right, we are at the login screen for Open Indiana. And we'll get logged in and take a look around. All right, it's doing the network config, which I could do without seeing the bubbles every time it does that. But let's take a look around here. So applications, this is going to be pretty standard stuff for a Mate desktop. Accessories, graphics internet office programming down in video system tools and run an application let's get a terminal open all right see if we can run some updates all right so while we're doing that let's take a look around so system has the normal stuff preferences look and feel administration control center which is my mouse wheel doesn't seem to be working interesting um all right so let's see all right let's go to displays and let's do i don't know 1680 by 1050 that looks a lot better. Keep configuration. Close that. And expand this out. All right. So look and feel. All right. So we got themes. It's really annoying that my mouse wheel does not work. I'm just going to leave that be right now. Background doesn't appear that there's anything else there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's just grab one of the mate. Close that. All right, now let's play with the mouse again. Definitely slower than a typical Linux distribution, given the same specs for the VM. Two processor cores, 128 uh, megs of video, and uh, pretty much what I, four gigs of RAM. Pretty much what I give a uh, typical Linux distribution that I review. And this is much laggier. Drag and drop pointer speed. All right, so we're going to need to find some other mouse software if we would want to use this. In the background over here, we've got updates happening. And so that's going to take a little while. So far, other than the, the speed being a little off, I think this is uh, pretty uh, presentable desktop see what we get for network it does pick up my nas boxes without having to manually mount them all right so we've got download on lord and icon we got my iso images showing on here so that's good uh, let's see what do they give us for a version of firefox Hey, there we go. Go to our hamburger menu. Very laggy. Okay, so this is Firefox Quantum ESR 60.6.3. Not horrible. So about Open Indiana. Okay, this is the 2019.04 version. 
That's good. Copyright 2010. Open Indiana Project and Oracle. All right. The, what else? What else? What else? Look and feel. Other. Personal. Man, I'm so used to my mouse working on everything else I try. It's, it's just throwing me for a loop. Power manager. You don't really need it in a desktop machine. Looks like uh, something similar to network manager. Might be their own take on it or just a skinned version of it. The notable thing that I'm not seeing is it does not have LibreOffice or any Office software by default, which is a little perplexing because it's free, so why why not? Wow, that's using up uh, 3.9 of four gigabytes of RAM. So that's a little more resource heavy than the typical Linux distribution that I've used. Uh, I might try bumping the RAM up to six gigs and see if that gives a little bit more room to breathe. But yeah, I mean, if, if uh, you're gonna be running Mate anyways, unless you're hell bent on a real official Unix derivative or descendant, I guess I should say, um, I would probably just run Ubuntu Mate. It's more responsive, it's less resource heavy, and you'll just generally have a little bit better experience. Plus, there's more and more up-to-date documentation. As we saw earlier, the Open Indiana website is, is like going on two years out of date as far as their releases. And there were several links that just didn't work, which I question how they expect to be taken seriously if they've got gaping holes in their website. Uh, leading to nowhere. On that note, if you haven't played with it before, give Open Indiana a spin. Uh, if you run it on physical hardware, you might see a little bit better performance. Uh, of course, I'm doing updates, so I haven't installed the guest editions for VirtualBox yet. That would probably help a little bit there, uh, but I normally like to run OS updates before I put VirtualBox guest editions on. And go figure. Um, <laughs> right when I'm ending this, we've finished the updates. I'm going to continue playing with this VM, get the guest editions installed, and uh, if I can make a dent on getting it a little bit more responsive and get the uh, mouse wheel working, then I will make another video and give you fine folks an update. Until then, this is Jeremy signing off for Practical IT. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.